Hey everyone, thanks for joining us. And uh, we have quite a program for you all today. Um, and listen, it's coming and we better be ready. I, hey, from Australia, Sylvia is joining us from Australia. Uh, listen, did you know that three of the top 20 cities that view, that join us are in Australia, number 10, 11, and 12? That is amazing. That is so cool. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Canada, I can't remember what area of Canada is another one of the big cities. That is cool. Obviously, places here in the U.S. And uh, one of the top areas all the way around is South Africa. So uh, thank you. This is cool seeing people joining from all over. Uh, we have a lot to talk about. Listen, friends, we have some really big news. Um, there, check this out. Jewish News Syndicate. This is Caroline Glick. A new phase in U.S.-Israel relations. Is, this is big. It's going to affect the whole world. Obviously, the United States. Uh, our guest here is going to be talking about this in just a minute, along with, it's coming, the criminalization of cash and regarding the BRICS and the petrodollar. And now even Mexico is saying, hey, uh, we're looking at joining BRICS. This is amazing to watch what is happening. So uh, listen, uh, <laughs> Uh, it, it, it's coming at breakneck speed. Please welcome Kurt Reed. Kurt, uh, thank you for joining me. It, it's like it's like um, crazy. You think of last night, you had your live, I had mine. And then here we are. You, I mean, it's, it's Monday and things are happening so fast. And looking at what's going on in America that will affect the world, everything is transpiring. Uh, we live in amazing days. So first of all, because I want to say this, Kurt, because some things don't look too hopeful. You all bring a lot of hope. Can you give us some hope with what we see happening? Because there is so much going on. Man, yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what. I mean, when we see the things that are taking place, I mean, uh, it, it's a tough neighborhood out there, you know. But, hey, I, like I always say, I've read the end of the book. Many of the viewers have read the end of the book, and we win, you know. And that's, a, I mean, it's, it's, it's just a great and glorious thing for God's people. He's going to rapture us out of here. We're going to be with the Lord uh, forever and ever. And, uh, I mean, we've got a bright future. Uh, we know the enemy's going down, literally. And, uh, so praise the Lord for that. You know, we have the blessed hope. It's not the blasted hope. So praise God. <laughs> I love that. The blessed hope, not the blasted hope. By the way, we do recognize everybody. We're having a few audio problems, but it's okay. We're going to keep moving forward anyways. The devil may want us to stop, but we aren't going to stop. We're moving forward. So uh, this is great. Okay, Kurt, let's start here. I, I mean, there's so much big news. Jewish News Syndicate, a new phase, Caroline Glick writes, in U.S.-Israel relations, the Biden administration state, uh, been, uh, administration statements and actions coupled with its overall policy toward Israel since entering office indicate a sea change, goes on and talks about all these different developments. I mean, it, it is really something to watch what is happening. Kurt, what, what do you have to say uh, about just the Israel-U.S. obvious problems that we're witnessing? Obvious problems. These problems have been going on since the current regime there in Washington. And, uh, um, you know, we've had them before. We're having them again. It's continuing to grow, continuing to get worse. Um, this current regime is not favorable towards Israel. And uh, look, we know when we see in the word of God uh, that it indicates that all the world is, is ultimately going to be against her. She's not going to have any friends, uh, so to speak. And even what she has right now is, uh, uh, is very limited, uh, but it's going to continue to get worse. And you know, the Lord's going to use that though. The Lord's going to use it because Israel will not be able to say, hey, the Lord helped her, the Lord delivered her, the Lord, or I mean, the, the, the the rest of the world did those things, but it's going to be by the hand of God and by the hand of the Lord ultimately. So what the Lord is doing is he's removing all of the other um, influences or factors one by one so that he ultimately in the end gets the glory, which ultimately he should have. Amen. So, so well said. You can go all the way back to Israel's beginnings, and then you can look at something like uh, David and Goliath. And uh, right. there it is, it looked like it was the end of Israel, and David comes up against this giant. It's an impossible situation. 
But David wasn't too worried about the size of the giant because he knew the size of his God. And, uh, and ultimately, Israel's going to stand. And, but I'm watching the U.S. So Caroline Glick writes this about this transpiring. She writes, Israel was rocked by news on Thursday that the U.S. State Department had ordered NASA scientist Dr. Amber uh, Strawn to cancel her participation in the Israel Physical Society's annual meeting. The news came following Strawn's posting on Twitter that her travel authorization was revoked on Wednesday. Uh, the State Department's move, which gives the appearance of an official boycott, would be stunning under any circumstance, but it's all the more alarming coming on the heels of the U.S. Uh, President Joe Biden's shocking remarks in relation to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his government's uh, efforts to place minimal limits on the Supreme Court's currently limitless powers. Uh, and, and then it's just continuing to get worse. We're watching the way that the Biden administration is handling Iran, uh, the way that they are threatening uh, Israel. It's just, it's just bizarre to see the threats that... Uh, that, Iran, that the Biden administration is. This from Israel Today or Israel Hayam. Biden spares Iran and scolds Israel. And you know, what, what we're, when I look at this, Kurt, I look back at history and you see how Hitler on a smaller scale, how he, how he started to treat the Jewish people, right? This is a much bigger thing is treating the entire nation of Israel in a similar way that things were turning against the Jews in the time of Hitler. Uh, it's very troubling to me, literally joining in a boycott, leading a boycott of the nation of Israel, coming against Netanyahu, scolding Israel, sparing Iran. Um, I've even heard something about equipping the Palestinians uh, to give them weapons. The Palestinians, the Biden administration. Right. Bill Salas is going to be talking about that with me on Friday, but I look at this and go, wow, this is just uh, it's something else. Oh, right. And we've got, I mean, we had Trump in office, right? We had uh, had, and now again, uh, Netanyahu in office. And you've got these two. Um, what you see taking place in the world today is trying to eliminate those that are going against the global system, those that are going against the deep state. The deep state isn't only in America, it's also in Israel, it's elsewhere as well. And if you are not joining their talking points, they're coming after you and they're coming after you big time. In fact, we all know what's going down uh, in the U.S. and New York uh, tomorrow, even in regards to Trump. And uh, that's its own interesting uh, talking point, maybe for for another time. But uh, uh, look, they don't like they don't like Bibi. And uh, the Supreme Court has uh, it, there in Israel has way too much uh, power to uh, too much authority, whatnot. And he's trying to balance it out. So he goes down the this road to balance this out, which everyone knew that he was going to do that. He ran, he spoke about that um, as he was running. He goes down this uh, road and now look what's happening, you know, and th this article uh, is interesting as it discusses a number of things. When a follow-up reporter, listen to this, asked Biden if he would invite Netanyahu to the White House, the, pres uh, the guy who calls himself president, uh, his response was immediate and unhesitating. He said, and I quote, no, not in the near term. So this is getting involved in Israeli uh, internal uh, politics and 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 in their system of what they do in their country and uh, and when he in fact when he was asked are you uh, you know kind of going uh, going after them and involving yourself in internal matters in Israel he said no well he can say anything he wants to say yeah. but the but uh, you know the proof is uh, is with the pudding you see exactly that's exactly what he's doing um, and uh, I mean. Uh, again, you're, as you're saying about the support for the Palestinians, all of that, exactly. Then the administration, this current administration, subverted the uh, Abraham Accords by compelling Israel to accept the Palestinians in the Abraham Accords summits. Uh, that also is significant on the religious standpoint of things, uh, speaking about the end times and who will be the final uh, false prophet and bringing the world together, uh, you know, in that global 
religion, it says Palestinian participation transformed uh, what had been a working alliance against Iran into a, a pylon against Israel. And, and it, it lists so many things in this article. All of this happened while the Israeli left was in power. All right. Now Netanyahu's in power. And once again, we see the deep state, all of those, they're going after him just like they went after the last president in this country. But we've got to remember something. What does it say in Genesis chapter 12, verse three? I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. So we have a blessing. Look, everything mm -hmm. isn't perfect in Israel. Israel is actually, uh, we call it the Holy Land. It's probably anything but it's extremely secular extremely godless um i think it's uh, what is it in tel aviv there the the largest lgbtq yeah. gatherings are are in israel yeah they are uh, the month of june in tel aviv pride month is uh it's like the the gay capital of the world is what it becomes right. i'm pretty sure that's what it's known as so when you see it we uh we also um, you know, I, as I think of everything developing, it's called the Holy Land because God's capital is Jerusalem, it's Zion. Jesus uh, was born in Bethlehem, crucified in uh, just outside the city gates of Jerusalem. Um, and, and all of the events of the Bible, they took place in what we would call the Holy Land. It's holy because of the Lord, but in this we have this mix of a mess. And uh, but ultimately, it's also, Kurt, it's, this, it's the uh, bullseye of the spiritual battle between Satan trying to usurp the authority of God. It's not going to work. Uh, we, we know that. Uh, Satan wants to be like God. Isaiah chapter 14, I will ascend to uh, the heavens. I will be like the Most High. And you see this going on with the Biden administration coming against Israel. And Kurt, I think this is good for all of our viewers to understand this too. We support Israel not because they're perfect. <laughs> that's, that's not it. Right. It's, it's because of what the Bible says, and it's of who God is. And God has chosen the people of Israel uh, for his purposes. And one of those purposes was for the Messiah to come from the people of Israel. And he's coming back. We have a, this is a Jewish book. We have a Jewish Messiah. He is coming back, and the Gentile world isn't exactly all that wonderful either. So when people say, I mean, people try to zero in on Israel, see, how, well, look at this awful thing or that awful thing. Well, look, look at the Gentile world. Look at what we are doing. And uh, you start looking at wokeism in the United States, you know, going down these paths. But I am really concerned about the, uh, what's happening to America. I believe we are under judgment. Biden, in the article, uh, just before where you read, Biden said this, um, we're not interfering in Israel's domestic affairs. They know my position. They know America's position. They know the American Jewish position. Yes, they. Yes, the Biden administration is. It came out in the news. They're totally. funding the, the, the protests against Netanyahu. And you look at this and you go, how do you say that? Obama was involved in the affairs when he was president. You know, we have what, Obama 2.0 with this administration or whatever it is. So, right. you know, looking at this, and then I think of the prophecy of Joel. So we think of Zechariah, all the world's going to come against Israel. We think of Genesis chapter 12, bless those who bless thee, curse those who curse thee. Joel, uh, God says, I will gather all the nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment with them there on account of my people. This will be the Jewish people, my heritage, Israel, the land of Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations, and they have also divided up my land. This is Biden. This is where we are. So I look totally. at it and go, man, we are looking at judgment. Totally, totally looking at it. And again, the Lord says in his word, look, I'm going to bless those. I'm going to curse those who or curse him who curses you. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're doing it uh, going against them with the whole, and I say so-called Palestinian. There's no true Palestinian, um, but uh, you know what I mean. So with the whole so-called Palestinian thing, with the Abraham Accords, with what's going on in their, their internal affairs right now, and a whole host of other issues, um, we are directly 
directly involved uh, in the background of these things, manipulating these things. But look, when we look in the Word of God, we we see that there are, uh, we understand that there is demonic influence in the world. Uh, We understand that there are demonic princes. We read about that in the book of Daniel uh, that are over areas, regions, countries, whatever it may be. And I personally believe that there is uh, some demonic lord, demonic prince that is influencing things uh, on those that, hey, if you don't want uh, the love of the truth, then you're going to fall for the lie. And uh, we see here that this current administration, hey, if they can't even recognize that a biological uh, man as a biological man and a biological woman as a biological woman, I, th- I think everything else really falls from there because they don't recognize God uh, for who he is. They're trying to change the things that God has made as, as absolutes uh, in this world and and they don't recognize him. And as a result of that, everything else is falling apart. So they fall for the lie because they do not love the truth. When Jesus said that, hey, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And yeah. so they're doing that, and, and the whole thing is a mess. It's not going to uh, bode well for America. We, we see what the prophets of old in the Word of God uh, have said under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And uh, I, I know you look at this the same way that I do. Um, how we see America today, it has to radically, radically shift uh, downgrade uh, dramatically for what I believe what we see is going to be coming upon the world. And that's exactly what we're seeing today. We're not only seeing it in regards to our relationship with Israel, uh, we're seeing it in the area of money, finances, uh, ESGs, central bank, uh, digital currencies, all of these kinds of things, the things that the Fed is doing. Uh, and it's, and it's, and what's interesting about that is that it's connecting with what's going on actually in China with what they've been doing with their financial system, what the EU has been doing with the financial system, the BRIC uh, countries, others. And it's all it's all falling apart, but it's coming together according to God's word in, in yeah. God's word for these things to come together. They have to fall apart. Yeah. Uh, and everything is falling apart. And uh, when I think of being uh, Romans chapter one, being given over to a reprobate mind. The one word I believe you could use to describe the reprobate mind based on what we're witnessing now would be woke. Uh, uh, People are, you know, the the decisions people are making, like you were talking, a a man, a woman, a woman, a man. How can you not even recognize the, uh, the foolishness of this, but yet also in Romans one, professing to be wise, I'll prove, I'll, show them to be fools. Uh, um, uh, Insane is what one translation actually says. And that is what is leading this world right now. So you you look at what we are doing against Israel. It is absolutely awful. And then we take what you were talking about. Let's go into money for a few minutes. We're, you know, a lot of news over the last couple of weeks about the BRICS nations and uh, countries getting away from the petrodollar. Saudi Arabia, Iran are saying they want to do it. Gateway Pundit has an article out today. Uh, Mexico is now, let me see if I can find it here. Um, Mexico is now saying, hey, uh, we want to be out of the petrodollar. Uh, We're looking at the BRICS nations too. So you look at this and we are watching a complete implosion of America. And, you know, we're trying to sound the alarm for people to wake up because a political savior is not going to save us. We need uh, Jesus Christ. But everything is collapsing, but at the same time, everything is going exactly the way God said it would. And uh, he warned us. He gave us the signs to look for. Kurt, you sent me this article earlier. I remember seeing it uh, a, a week or so ago or a few days ago. Europe is pushing the criminalization of physical cash. Uh, that's a warning. Um, so we know that's coming. Criminalization of physical cash. Wow. Criminalization of it. And then now we're hearing more and more about this. Uh, this is another article you sent me. We're hearing more and more about it. It's going to become big. Uh, we know that the World Health Organization, uh, uh, the whole thing coming up in May 
with it looks like the United States is going to be uh, subject to the World Health Organization. Thank you again, uh, Biden regime. But this, the Fed now rolls out in July, paving way for totalitarian power and central bank digital currencies. I, I mean, it's just one thing after another, but the the old world order has to collapse, uh, and we are we are watching it being taken down. Kurt, I don't think any of these things are unintentionally. What was still one of the most bizarre things is all the attacks against Israel. There's world leaders that think this is a great idea. Let's let's get rid of Israel. Their problem, and it is the it's the it's the biggest problem that the world's ever going to have. Um, but nevertheless, let's go through the money thing because sure. I'm, I'm looking at this going. We have so many things that are happening right now. Yeah, it's it's crazy. You know, this the whole thing um, there with Mexico uh, really considering about joining BRICS. What's BRICS? It's um, uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. Um, they've got uh, their own little financial alliance right there. Mexico wanting to drive. I mean, that's right on our border, Mexico, you know, with something like this. You've got uh, a, a little separate of an issue, but Venezuela uh, being influenced greatly by Russia and and by Iran. And I look at all of this as closing in around us, the growing socialism that you see there uh, under uh, Trudeau there in Canada. And, and I just feel like uh, things are closing in. We are not the safe country that we used to be years ago. You've got North Korea and their missiles that can now hit uh, the United States. Uh, a number, I mean, North Korea. I mean, think about it, Korea. Uh, I mean, it's it's really quite the mess indeed. So Mexico is getting closer to joining these BRICS countries. The Biden regime is destroying America, it says, on a daily basis, and the world knows it. No country wants to be aligned with that. Look, we continue to show weakness under this president. And as we continue to show weakness, what does that do? That makes your enemies move in, and that makes your friends move out. So what's happening mm. is, is we are becoming here think about this one of the largest land masses in the world um the the world's number one economy um when you look at the the land mass when you look at the the, the people mass of our country all of these things okay america uh has been a great country but when we are uh sending israel out of out of the mix uh, here, the things that we're doing against Israel politically, when we see how we are approaching things from a weak standpoint in the world and in the globe. And I mean, this goes back even with Obama and he went on his great apology uh, tour. You know, he's literally bowing to the king. You got to be kidding me. Bow a president of the United States bowing to some other world leader. What a mess. He goes on his apology tour. All we're doing is showing weakness. Now we've got this president continuing to show weakness and so what and then our economy is growing weaker and weaker as well you know as we talk about uh, uh petrodollar we talk about all of these things look at what happened when trump was president hey we had we be, we were the world's number one uh, uh oil producer we had we got so much oil here it's not even funny what we've got uh the the cost of gas was you know relatively dirt cheap and within practically no time, the cost of, of gas doubled and then some uh, in America. And why is that? Well, because, hey, we don't, we don't want the whole Keystone uh, pipeline thing, and we don't want to drill for this and drill for that and, and, and all of these things. And so we're, we're entering more and more into the global mindset of things, and it is destroying America. America was always innovative. America always took a stand apart from what the rest of the world had done. But the more that we enter into the global mindset of things, it's bringing us down, it's weakening us so the enemies come in, so that our friends don't want anything to do with us. And so then we've got Mexico wanting to align themselves with Russia. You've got to be kidding me. Yeah. You know, but that's how weak they look at our financial system. I mean, look what's been going on uh, banking here. What is it now? Maybe three weeks into this or mm -hmm. something like that uh, with the Silicon Valley and, and all of these things. Guys, I mean, it's an absolute mess 
just total weakness here in America. And so that's the reason why these things are growing and they're continuing to grow. And it says that these moves are devastating the United States and its national security. 100 percent and and understand that i mean mexico has 120 million people all right uh there's a there's a lot of uh manufacturing and, and factories and things like that there uh mexico is the second largest economy uh economy there in latin america all of this so this is really a big deal because it it just continues to weaken us uh yeah and the these other nations they can smell blood in the water like a shark and say they see what has happened with America. So they've got to act now, and they know it. And But I also think when I look at China and Russia, all these, and all the other nations, uh, you, they can tell. We can tell. America's gone. I mean, when you start throwing in the wokeism, the abortions, obviously what we are doing to Israel, it's like Israel was, was like our only hope was, hey, Let's protect Israel. Well, we're, we're now cursing them. So mm -hmm. you can see, I mean, how do we come back from what is happening when uh, th the abortion is being driven forward by the left? Absolutely driven forward. And then for babies that aren't born, uh, that, that aren't aborted, what happens? They go into the government schools. The government is demanding everything from them going to take them from you, at least they're gonna get them for several hours a day. Uh, your kids are gonna be in the government schools. They're gonna be taught the wokeism uh, day one from kindergarten, younger if they can. So everything has been destroyed in America. The children are being destroyed in America. Homeschoolers, there's not enough of them. So it's a very small percentage. So when you look at it as a whole, it is an absolute disaster. China wouldn't buy into the nonsense we are doing. Mexico doesn't buy into the nonsense we are doing. When you look at wokeism uh, and all of the different things we are doing, nobody believes this stuff. Russia doesn't buy into it when it comes to our green policies. So we're not gonna, we're not gonna have oil anymore. Well now, uh, o Biden is announcing, hey, we're gonna drill in Alaska and we're gonna drill in the Gulf. We'll see what happens there. You know, if he is, there's, he's up to something. If he, I mean, I, I, I promise you there's, there's nothing good that's going to come out of the Biden administration. But mm -hmm. the green policies, you mentioned the ESGs that are being forced upon us. Um, now we, we have the talk, what, uh, Chase, um, I think it's Bank of America. Uh, we have the, the whole plan. Uh, they're saying, hey, we're going to be going digital. These things are going to be forced on us. And... And, you know, the Fed now coming in July, the World Health Organization. No, we are watching, folks, we're, we are wa watching the collapse of America. And, but ultimately, God is sovereign. You know, Amen. God is the one who gives us the kings that we, excuse me, that we deserve. And, but God is sovereign, and our hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm looking, going, man, there's, you know, I'm, I'm just not a... a a person who believes a political leader is the savior of, a, of America. I believe it's, yeah. it's, it's the Lord, uh, the Lord only. And unless there's repentance in America, we're, we're gone. America is gone. It, it, it's done. No, I, I agree. And, and when we see things like this, I, I had mentioned this last night on our program, celebrating evil, Satan Con uh, sells out with largest satanic gathering in U.S. history. I mean, think yeah. about that. So we've, 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 uh, our country is doing everything it can to remove God out of the equation with everything. We've removed him from the schools, from prayer, from Bibles in the schools. Uh, I mean, goodness forbid, a, a student should even have a Bible and be reading a Bible at lunch break. You know, that's going to be a problem. You know, they're, they're sending kids up to the dean's office. Goodness forbid you should have on a T-shirt that has anything to say, you know, John 3, 16, or whatever it might be. It's the removal of God, removal of Ten Commandments uh, there from the, the hallways of the schools. The more that we remove God from this country, then what? The enemy's like, hey, 
I see an, an opening there in what used to be an armor. And so the enemy moves on in. We see that again with Satan Khan. We see that with a number of things. I mean, Satan is, is popular these days. The TV shows, things on Netflix, all this kind of stuff. I mean, he's, he's like Mr. Cool right now. That's how they paint him to be. He's the good guy. Uh, uh, God is not. God wants to take away all your, all your fun, all your freedom. But it's the complete opposite of that. And we see in the word of God that, look, they're going to fall for these things things they're going to believe the lie and um, and so god and so why is god even going to bring if god is such a loving god right I, i'm sure you get the question if god is such a loving god then why is he going to bring about what the bible says is the worst period of time ever known uh, in human history and seven years of it, nonetheless. I mean, that's a long time, right? Seven years of this going on, of the judgments of God. Uh, by the way, I believe the entire tribulation is the judgment of God, not just part of it. And, uh, and But we are not objects of God's wrath. All right. And that's the reason, among other reasons, why I believe that we are raptured out of here before these things take place. But um, we see those things are going to take place and everything. Why does God do that? Because, and in fact, we've even done a couple of times taking a little bit of a, of a poll in the church. And how many of you came to the Lord when things were easy in your life? How many came to the Lord when things were difficult? And the majority of the people came to the Lord when things were difficult. Why? Because when things are difficult, that's when um, you are a little bit more in tune to things. That's when you're calling out upon the Lord. And the scripture says, call upon the name of the Lord and be saved, right? Today is the day of salvation. Don't wait for tomorrow. You're not guaranteed tomorrow. You know, and so we see all of these things and God is is going to allow them to be. In fact, he is um, causing them to be in order to bring people to come to the Lord, which is why I believe that perhaps the largest uh, evangelical, I don't know if you want to call it evangelical outreach or or the, the greatest amount of people coming to the Lord maybe in history, I think is going to be during the tribulation. Because when you think about this, mm. you've got the 144,000 uh, that are going to be out there uh, being used of the Lord. You've got the two witnesses that are going to have a global platform. We know that because when the enemy puts them to death, that's going to be viewed by the whole world. So they're going to have a global platform. Platform. Of course, the technology has been there for you know a while now. Anyhow, um, we see the angels uh, that are that are flying midair, and and all of these things. We read about the tribulation saints. So there's a number of people that are coming to Christ, and I believe it's going to grow. And I believe that that. Um, uh, programs like this and like others out there, uh, I believe that many of these are going to survive because a lot of people download these, uh, Tom, and put these onto their computers. There's there's a number of things like the Rapture Kit and all of that as well. Uh, and so I believe that there's going to be many that are going to stumble on these things or many that have been in our churches that have heard the things that we have said and for whatever reason, uh, their heart wasn't pricked at the moment. They didn't, they didn't call upon the Lord. But after after these things begin to happen, they're going to remember these things. And I believe that there are so many that are going to come to Christ. Yep. It's going to be I astounding. Do, I do too. Out of every tribe, nation, tongue, and people, people are right. going to be saved. And by the way, I this is for everybody. Listen, if you're thinking, hey, you're going to leave something behind for uh, your friends and loved ones and neighbors or whoever breaks into your house after the rapture, I would leave behind things that aren't necessarily internet dependent, but as Kurt said, hey, people, download these programs. Keep things in a, in a, in a, on some kind of platform where people can access them after the internet is shut down. The internet being, uh, listen, God is going to be scrubbed from the internet because Satan is not going to have right. a competitor. He doesn't want this message going up. I believe the written word is I would have stacks of Bibles in, in your hiding place, whatever that is, for people to come in because, uh, listen, people are going to be searching to and fro for the word. There's going to be a famine in the land, but God's going to be saving souls during uh, the tribulation period. Uh, by the way, I want to tell everybody also right now, start getting ready to send in your questions. Put the word question in all caps. Uh, we're going to get to them. Uh, here in just a minute. A couple of things, uh, Kurt. One person on here commented, I saw it a few minutes ago, about Daniel. Uh, during the time of Daniel, when Judah was being taken captive in Babylon, Daniel and others still stood strong in the Lord. And, 
And absolutely. So we need to remember that, that listen, things will be collapsing around us. The reasons why Judah and Israel were judged in the Old Testament, we can see the same things, just a different century here in America right now. Uh, so we can see what's taking place. But you know what? God still saves individuals, strengthens us, will make us stronger and stronger as long as we are committed to him. So be strong in the Lord. And as Kurt said in the beginning, everything is going exactly the way that God said it would. Uh, Kurt, as people are still getting ready to send in their questions, check out this article. This is out of World Israel News. Uh, this is from today. Every Muslim should act against Israeli escalations at Jerusalem holy sites, says Jordanian monarch. Uh, so <laughs> this is going on right now during Ramadan. You look at this, every Muslim should act against Israeli escalations at the holy sites. Wow. Right. They, do the, they do this every year at Ramadan, by the way. It's, it's, um, they, they say this every year. Sometimes, right. yeah, I've, I've, so I was in, I was on they the temple, I was on the Temple Mount during Ramadan one time. It was rather interesting. I got off there exceptionally fast. <laughs> uh, it was, last year I was traveling in Israel during Ramadan, and uh, it, was, it was interesting, but we're watching things escalate. So uh, ultimately, God is the one who, uh, who keeps his, uh, his people. So, amen. Well, and, and Tom, I mean, so why are they doing that? All right. Well, the reason why they're doing that is because they hear some of the talking points of what's what's being discussed in Israel, um, in that there is the desire uh, by some to rebuild the temple. Of course, there's a temple institute there, and uh, the things that have already been made, there's already the blueprints and, and all of these things. They've been practicing the sacrifices. They're training uh, the koanim, uh, uh, the priests there, to do the sacrifices according to biblical specifications. They're there's, um, there's rumors that, uh, you know, a big question forever uh, is where's the Ark of the Covenant? I, I, I personally think that the Ark of the Covenant is here. I think they know where it is, um, but that's up for debate. Um, but that is my opinion is when I say they, that the is, uh, Israeli government, certain select ones, I believe, um, I believe know where it is. But um, I do too, but none the, yeah. by the way, but. But but none the, but nonetheless, uh, it's all interesting. It's all fascinating, and uh, I believe that they're trying to prevent that. Of course, we know every year at this time of year, um, you've got uh, some of these Israeli priests that are asking for permission. Of course, they get denied every year, asking for permission to uh, slaughter a lamb uh, up there on Temple Mount. Uh, they do that, and uh, uh, I'll tell you what: uh, what we think is going to be news tomorrow in America, if they did that. In Israel, that would be <laughs> that would be the number one news because yeah. it's all breaking out. Well, this year they're they're not. It sounds like they don't want to even ask permission. They're just going to go and sacrifice the lamb. They will not be able to do it. Not now. The right, day right. will come. Right. There's going to be a temple that's going to be built. Then the day yeah. will come where they will be doing sacrifices. We know that because the Antichrist brings an end to the sacrifice and offering. So we get that from Daniel nine. So they keep talking about it. I also agree with you. I believe uh, certain key people over in Israel know where the Ark of the Covenant is. Um, I, I've been convinced for various reasons, it's, it's for a long time, it's uh, underneath the Temple Mount somewhere, hidden away. Right. That's, that's my opinion. Um, I, don't think it, I don't think the Vatican has it. Uh, I, I don't think it's in Ethiopia either, but, uh, but yeah, I, I think it's, it's, it's definitely hidden away. Uh, Marie says, I believe our Bible apps will disappear soon. Then they will come after our, the printed Bibles. Uh, the Bible apps will disappear. They're going to have a much harder time getting the printed Bibles. They will try, but there are things you, you can hide away printed Bibles much easier. The problem with an app is you just got to remove it. That's it. It's gone from your phone. It's gone from your laptop. It's gone from everywhere. With uh, the written word, you can hide it. Yes. Oh, and, and if I can just interject here for a second, when we're talking about hiding the word, what does the word actually tell us to do? Hiding the word of God tells us to hide the word in our heart, right? To hide his word in our heart. So how do we hide his word in our heart? Well, we keep on listening to the word. We hear the word uh, through uh, our own personal devotions, being in church, being in fellowship and all. Uh, we, hear, we hear the word through being in, in fellowship, all of these things, right? And we hide it. We memorize his word. We get his word inside, and it's interesting because at just th that key moment, 
and and where we just we just need it right he just brings to mind his word even through some of the praise and worship songs uh that uh, some of those are off of the book of psalms and all of that and so we hide his word in our hearts and that's the best place that you can hide it because then the only way to uh to get rid of the word ultimately is to get rid of god's people and by the way that's what we see in the word of god that yes. they're ultimately yeah. try to do because there's there because the word still is going to be around no matter what book burnings they do uh, or anything like that yeah. whatsoever yeah jesus said although heaven and earth will pass away my word will never uh, pass away. So his, his word will be here forever. No, yeah, no matter what book burnings come. Uh, Darwin Taylor says, will the Bible be used in the millennial kingdom and beyond as we use it now? Um, what are your thoughts on the Bible? Let's go with the millennial kingdom. Okay. Well, uh, first of all, it says in the word that uh, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not, will not pass away. And so when we talk about heaven and earth passing away, we know that that is after the thousand year reign uh, leading into the eternal state when God makes a new heaven and new earth, praise the Lord, because it's all been polluted by sin. So he's going to make a new, but that is there at the end of that. So even as it says, even at that point, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. It's not going to pass away. Yeah. Uh, when I look so, at the, the millennial kingdom, I do believe that we will have Bibles even as we, right. not necessarily, we're going to be in our glorified bodies. We're going to know as he is known. However, it's understanding that the, the planet is going to be populated for the millennial kingdom with people who have babies just like now. So if we take a couple that uh, is married, they're married now, they go into the tribulation period, they get saved and they don't get beheaded. They manage to escape the threats of antichrist, but they're now believers in Christ. So they get to the millennial kingdom. They're married. They're going to be married in the millennial kingdom. They're going to be having babies during the millennial kingdom and their babies are going to need to uh, come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. They're going to be born unsaved. They're not going to have glorified bodies. No. And with that, you look at the word of God and uh, listen, it's going to be, the uh, the testimony of the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe the Bible will be used during the millennial kingdom because people will need to know Christ. And, and also, Kurt, I, I look at these sacrifices that are going to take place at the temple right. during the millennial kingdom. Why are there still going to be sacrifices? I believe it's for that same purpose, for all those that are born during the millennial kingdom. Uh, and their parents, right? They're going to look at the sacrifices. They're gonna, it's going to be a trigger for them, the sacrifices that point to Jesus who will be ruling and reigning in Jerusalem. Uh, just as we have the Old Testament is the shadow, but the substances of Christ regarding the sacrifices, it's the same thing in the millennial kingdom. People are going to wonder, why are they doing that? It's because of what Jesus, Yeshua, has done. They'll have... Uh, because they're still going to be, the planet's going to be populated with unsaved right. people and will have the witness of the word and also of the sacrifices taking place. That's my take on things. Right. No, that is 100%. I mean, you pretty much said everything that was exactly going through my mind. You're reading my mind. But even as we see in the Old Testament types and shadows, we see the fulfillment and reality of them and the completion of them in Jesus Christ. You know, you see uh, the images or the the word pictures whatever you want to call it uh, in the old testament of the temple we see now that we in christ are the temple of the holy spirit we see the imperfect sacrifices multiple sacrifices of bulls and goats lambs all of this in the old testament we see that jesus christ is the fulfillment as the lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world and so yes yeah, so i agree 100 percent um on your observation on that yeah uh totally. deborah Deborah, thank you for agreeing with me. Appreciate that. <laughs> uh, Deborah Lynn says, I have a lot of money in cash. Well, don't advertise that, Deborah. Um, should I put it in the bank or does it matter? <laughs> so, hey, listen, ultimately, um, during the tribulation period, uh, look, we, we, we know when it comes to the rider on the black horse, um, there's going to be such economic catastrophe uh, the thing that's going to matter the most is food and water. And no matter how much gold or silver or cash a person has, 
listen, it, well, cash, I think, is going to be irrelevant at that point because I do believe some form of digital currency will be part of, will be the form of the market, the beast. Mm -hmm. But uh, for now, I don't know. I'm not a financial advisor, so I don't want to really give advice on that. But uh, we don't know how long it's going to be before everything is switched over to digital currency. In the meantime, I think cash is good. Hey, if you got cash, then then good. I'll send this. <laughs> I, I mean, I, it's, don't advertise you have a lot of cash with people on, on no, the internet. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I, I would say cash is good. Assets are better. Uh, um, yeah. And, and ultimately, real, uh, you, know, like, you probably get that question a lot too. But uh, I, ultimately, listen, it's, you need food. And I don't right. care what happens when things crash, you, you need food, you know. Um, I watch a lot of financial guys, Peter Schiff and many others. It's uh, gold, mm -hmm. silver, cash. Um, but we, but biblically, we know the direction of things, so we can actually see ahead, uh, not just what the stock market does today or this week. We can see all the way to the end and and uh, trust in the Lord. And we need and you need to eat. Uh, Patrick Hart yeah. says, "Will we know?" the Holy Spirit in a tangible way like the Father and the Son in eternity. I'm thinking of how they have thrones, for example. Do you have any thoughts on that? Interesting question. Um, well, of, of course. I mean, the Holy Spirit is third person of the Trinity. We're filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, now we know, Scripture says, now we know in part, then we shall know in full. So um, what we know in part right now, or see in part, or understand in part at this point of time will become clearer once we have been, uh, go to be with the Lord. You know, and uh, so we go to be with the Lord. We, we see in full. We understand in a way that we don't understand. We comprehend in a way that we don't comprehend. We're not limited uh, by the things that we are limited right now with our bodies. So, yes, I, the Lord wants us to know him, uh, wants us to make him known, but he wants us to know him and to grow in him and to enjoy the Lord and to live in the Lord and, and all of that. So, yes. Yeah, so um, I look at it. I, somebody had said many years ago, I don't know if it was. It might have been Hal Lindsey. I don't know. It was a long time ago now. But uh, when we go to be with the Lord, and I don't know how else to say it. So I'm just going to say it like this. When we go to be with the Lord, we don't become dumber. <laughs> you know, so, uh, so <laughs> you know, great. you know, and, and so I look at it like that. And I think we are going to know in such an incredible way. Uh, yes, the Holy Spirit, uh, but the Father, uh, Jesus, in such an incredible and dynamic way so much more so than we do today that it's going to blow our minds. Amen. It, it, it indeed will. Kurt, real quick, I have a few more questions to get to, sure. but people can uh, watch you on YouTube. Uh, what's the name of your channel? I know we'll have it in the description and so forth, but just for everybody so they can hear it. Yeah, if you go to YouTube, probably the easiest thing to do is type in Kurt Reed, spelled C U R T. R E E D, and it should bring up our channel right there by doing that. Uh, you can type in uh, Calvary Chapel Harvest Life or Maranatha Prophecy Update, but probably typing in Kurt Reed is the easiest way um, to bring up our channel. And Kurt's mm -hmm. in Las Vegas. Uh, That's right. Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, speaking of Las Vegas, I will be not in Las Vegas, but with Billy Crone, who's from uh, Henderson, which is right there by Vegas. Uh, I'll be with Billy Crone in Lake Stevens, Washington on April 22, and then in North Carolina, I'll be there with uh, Billy Crone and Eric Barger, and then North Carolina with Billy Crone and Cam Michael in North Carolina on April 28 and 29. I uh, hope you, if you're in those areas, it'd be great to meet y'all. Okay, uh, Linda Jones says, question, many people want to leave America thinking it will be different. What do you think about it? Kurt? There really is nowhere to go. I mean, where are you? Gonna, I mean, where are you going to go? Personally, here's me. All right, I love Mexico. We're close to Mexico. I love Mexico. I love the weather in Mexico. I love Mexican food. But I mean, if you're, I mean, you know, I mean, where are you going to go? You know, I mean, right? I mean, your thoughts. Oh, yeah, big time. Well, I, I remember years ago, Chuck Missler had moved to, uh, I believe it was New Zealand. 
uh, Australia, one of the two, yeah. Yeah, and uh, he had moved there. I believe the reason why he went there was just because of how things are just going down here in the U.S. And I mean, if he could see it even right now, you know, even much worse uh, than it was then. But uh, here's the thing. We, we know that what's coming upon the world is going to be uh, absolutely global in scope, right? It's going to affect every single part, every single corner, uh, even the the mark of the beast. It says no man will be able to buy or sell uh, unless he has the mark and all that. So uh, no man means no man. We take the word of God uh, literal, uh, unless God's word indicates that that it's not in some particular uh, area. But I mean, we take the word of God literal so yes so uh, leave america you're just going to be entering into another in fact we look at i mean some of our um uh, online congregation is in australia i think you had mentioned Mm -hmm. earlier some of ours is in australia as well and my goodness they had some real serious issues going on in australia over this this past three years and i was just blown away by what some of them were sharing you would have thought before australia is good guys there's no one if you want to hide hide yourself away in the lord I mean, that's Amen. really, I mean, that's Amen. really where it's at. I mean, I, I, I don't want to just go to another nation. I want to vacate the planet. <laughs> All right. I mean, uh, we have the, we have the rapture of the church when God is going to call us out of this place. And that's what I'm looking for. Forget another nation. <laughs> a, a, you know, Kurt, that was great. <laughs> that was, that, and you know, we are citizens of heaven. Uh, we are in this world, but we are not of this world. And, um, the, so so well said. Thank you so much. And if I can share one other thing as well, and I know that we're all in this place. I mean, you know, when I did some ministry in Mississippi, one of the pastors there, he was, you know, shocked that I'm from, you know, horrible Las Vegas. It's Sin City. <laughs> and I looked at him, I said, you don't think you got sin in your city? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> you know, it's just, hey, in Vegas, it's open. In your city, it's 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 hidden. I don't know which is worse. Maybe it's just the same. Okay. Oh, but I think a lot great. of times we're all wanting to get out of uh, get out of California. Uh, right, uh, yeah. and Emperor Newsom and everything. You get you, you exchange one problem for another. This is how I look at it. If God's got you, Tom, in California, God's got me here. Uh, the Lord's got me here in Las Vegas. He's got some of you, and wherever you're at, hey, just be a light of Christ. He said uh, that He is the light of the world, and then it says then that we are lights of the world. So what do we do? Well, we don't. We're not light emanators. So what does that mean? He's a light emanator. We are light reflectors. So the more that we are be for the Lord Jesus, right? We're in his word, we're living for him, we're seeking him, serving him, we're worshiping the Lord, right? The more that we are in Christ, we are reflecting his light. Well, hey, the only purpose of reflecting light is is for there to be something or someone really to reflect it on. And so what I would suggest to you is is just be that, that light that God is calling you to be in the dark place that you are in and just let God use you mightily. Pray, Lord, how can you use me in this place? How can you use me maybe uh, uh, before the school boards, right? How can you use me in a number of different areas? And just watch what he does in your life. Uh, it, Kurt, that was excellent. Uh, so what a great reminder. Um, do you want to have one more question? I know we've been going for quite a while so far. You want to do one more? You're good. That was You're so good. encouraging. And you brought hope to our times, the name of the program. So that was very, that was Praise great. Lord. That was wonderful. Okay, uh, Senorita, or is it Senorita, uh, T-Bear, uh, with the way CBDCs are quickly starting to get put in place. Now, by the way, uh, Bridgelette will be joining me tomorrow. So we're going to be really getting into mm. what is going on with the, the CBDCs and the Fed now. We'll get into that tomorrow and the World Health Organization coming up in May. That'll be tomorrow's program. But right now, Senorita says, with the way CBDCs are quickly starting to get put in place now, and the speed at which technology is flying in our faces, do you think it would be a rather short time between the world getting installed with CBDCs and the mark of the beast being installed? Seems hard to believe that they would hold themselves back from that level of power hungriness. Um, What are your thoughts? My thoughts first in the holding back is that they really don't have a choice in holding back or not holding back anything. God is in control. Oh, that's good. And so when I see everything that I see 
in the word. Look, we understand that one of the uh, attributes, characteristics of God is that he is almighty, he is omnipotent, right? He's in control, he is sovereign. So everything has to go through his hands. It's not like the Lord is like, well, I, you know, I, I know what's going to happen, but I'm not in control of it. He's in total control of it. I think if, if, if anything, that's where a lot of people struggle is when they come to realize that God is in control and he's letting these things happen. In fact, he's, he's uh, orchestrating various things. And we already talked about earlier what the purpose of that is. So we're not going to rehash that yeah. again, but God is sovereign. We have to understand that. We look at that when we read in the book of uh, Job right? Hey, Satan had to go before God and say, hey, can I do this and that to Job? Yeah, I think if I do this and that to Job, hey, Job's only uh, only serving you and worshiping you because he's got everything. You know, he's just got the, the life of Riley. And uh, you take away all of the all of the goods, all of the goodness in his life, and just watch how he curses you. And, you know, and ultimately that came back to, to bite the enemy. And, you know, Job loved the Lord and, and, and Job had to go through a tough time. All right, so when we address the issue of CBDCs and uh, Mark of the Beast, Mark of the Beast technologies, we wanna talk about Quantum Dot, you know, all of these kinds of things, we see that these things are preparing the way. We talked about, you had mentioned a moment ago, the whole Fed Now thing um, in July, I think that is June, July, uh, but all of that, it's all stepping stones, right? Because it, when, they, when they do these things in, in this manner, stepping stones they make it more palatable it's a lot easier uh to swallow something that doesn't taste good when it's mixed with something else a lot of parents do that with some of the maybe medication for their kids right and they'll mix it in the you know the applesauce or whatever it is in a or what do they say a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine <laughs> I've heard down, a song, right heard a song like that <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah a long time ago so uh so that's the reason why they introduce things little by little uh it's not as noticeable it's not as shocking it's more palatable will these things lead into that yes i believe they will uh we recognize when we look in the word we look in uh what is it revelation 13 revelation 14 elsewhere we see uh the mark of the beast look it's not cold hard cash it, and the world is getting away from it. So we see what the world's doing. We Most of all, we see what the word of God says. The, the question is, what's the timeline between the two? I have no idea, but I do think it's all moving quickly because when we look across the sectors, not just the financial world with things with the mark of the beast, not just in um, uh, governmental through uh, World Economic Forum, World Bank, United Nations, all of those things. So that's all coming together in that sector. Then we see religiously, uh, whether we're talking about Abraham Accords, a number of other things uh, going on there, we're seeing all of those things uh, taking place as well. It's all coming together. And the Lord said, when you see all these things, know that the time is near. But how near is near? That we don't know. But I do think it's it's really soon, though. I, yeah. I do believe that. I say come quickly, Lord Jesus. Hey, I was right. going to end there, but I want two real quick things. I think, can you give me two minutes? Yeah, Two yeah. different people have commented, so I want, I want to bring this up. I just want to deal with this before, uh, before tomorrow. Uh, so Pamela Zwierink says, I believe when the church is removed, grace will end. Sacrifices will need to be done again like in the Old Testament. Pamela, that's not how people were saved even in the Old Testament. They were still saved by faith. The sacrifices right. in the Old Testament, very clear in the Bible, pointed to Christ. That's what they did. And... Uh, Hence, Abraham was saved say by faith, it was counted to him for righteousness. So it's, uh, through grace you are, by grace you are saved through faith. Uh, the same thing's going to happen in the tribulation period. Uh, people are going to be saved by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The animal sacrifices, I think you're referring to the ones in the millennial kingdom. Look, Jesus is here. People still need to be saved. Only Jesus can forgive sins. The animals could not forgive. They pointed to Christ. So um, then the next, this is a question. Real, I think we can do this real quick too. Uh, I'd say you can comment on these, but I don't want to go too long for everybody. No, well, I, okay. I, I would like to comment on that. All right, can I comment right. on that one go, for just a moment? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I would love to. I don't want so, to keep you here forever. <laughs> it's, it's all good, man. I'm, I'm having a good time. So um, 
All right, when we're talking about those sacrifices, and like we look back in the Old Testament there, first of all, we have to understand that Abraham believed God and it was accredited to him or accounted to him as righteousness. In other words, God deposited that faith into his uh, his account, his spiritual account. When we look at the sacrifices that had taken place, the sacrifices were the outworking of the faith. Okay. Even in the old Testament, the That's sacrifices great. never replaced the faith. Well, they were not supposed to replace the faith. All right. Now we do know that people go through the motions of things. And so that's another thing, but ultimately the sacrifices were the outworking of that faith, not only on that regard, but in pointing ahead, as we said earlier to the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the singular lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Oh, that was great. I think a good Friday coming. Oh, fantastic. Very well said. Okay. Val Halloran. Do you think those in heaven now will be disappointed having to come back for the millennium? No, I don't. <laughs> I think, think we're going to be going up. I can't wait to come back. But my dad asked me that. Same question, Val, so you're not alone. My dad asked me the same thing. He goes, you mean I have to come back to this place? I said, you know what? It's no. going to be awesome. Listen, we're going to have our glorified bodies. It is going to be totally awesome. Jesus is going to be here in Jerusalem. And then right. we're going to be waiting for the new heaven and the new earth. Those in heaven right now are waiting for their glorified body. The new heaven and new earth won't be here till the end of the millennial kingdom. So the, it, we're, this millennial kingdom is going to be totally awesome. And uh, we're, like I said, we're going to be in our glorified bodies. And so will those people who are in heaven now. So. Yeah, totally, totally. Well, they're in, they're in heaven now, but they're not in their body, uh, just like you said, yeah, right? Yeah. So, but they are with the Lord, but they're out of the body. Be absent from the body is be present with the Lord. When they come back here with the Lord, they're still going to be with the Lord, praise God, and then they're going to have the body, but the body is not going to be subject to sin and death and sickness and uh, uh, yeah. back aches and hip pains and <laughs> all of these kinds of things that we're dealing with, right? And so it's going to be great. It's going to oh, be great. Amen. It, Val, that was a great question, and I know yeah. you're not. I know not just you and my dad had that question. A lot of people have that. That was, uh, that was very good. Thank you. And uh, okay, uh, we went way over, Kurt. Thank you much. Tomorrow, Britt Gillette's going to be joining me. I uh, hope you can make a live. It's going to be quite an exciting program. Uh, thanks, Kurt. Look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you, everybody. And uh, may, in the words of J. Vernon McGee, may the Lord richly bless you, my beloved. See ya. Amen. Amen. God bless.